<laughs> you can go. Um, we've, we've had a constructive exchange of viewpoints. They didn't agree to change anything, but we very clearly made the case that significant proportions of their coverage is not based on science. And we called on them in the future if they were going to have headlines that they need to be scientifically accurate. We also put the case clearly to them that um, it is essential that the Daily Mail is on side with the science <laughs> and not just doing um, giving coverage to unscientific climate skeptics. Britain's future and the wider planet depends on it, and the Daily Mail's conscience and their heart has to be open to taking a positive line from that one. But no clear commitments. They did ask us to follow up with some specifics, but uh, and we they promised to present the occupied demands to Paul Dagger at the end of the year to get back to the spider. I, I think the, um, the thing to say is that um, you know, we do have to give the mail credit for having had a meeting with us. They listened. Um, what will matter is not what was seen in there, but what appears on the pages of the Daily Mail in the coming days, weeks and months, particularly leading up to the Paris Climate Talks. That's the really key issue that we want to see, that we need, again, need to monitor and watch and highlight whether they do the right thing or the wrong thing. But I do think it was rather nice to hear that uh, they were very pleased to say how hard they were working to cut the carbon emissions of this building. So I think what we'd like to see is perhaps see them boasting about that in their own pages. Uh, and if they identify that as an important issue, then actually they could you know, make sure they're telling their readers about that being an important issue as well. Also made the